make decision making tables, if there was more diversity, if we had more inclusiveness in our organisations, in society. So Global Courage, the mission of it is to create a better, braver world. Um, and I do a lot of work with leaders in organisations and in different spheres of the world, in government, um, and helping them to be better and braver leaders. And so, yeah, the work of Global Courage is really about emboldening braver leadership in every sphere. Oh, that's, that's great. So with, I guess, with what you're working on right now, um, actually, before we do that, let's talk about your, your podcast too. What, because um, you've got, again, as, as I, I know I took a bunch of notes about what you've been working on, but as I keep scrolling <laughs> through, I'm like, oh yeah, you do this and you do this and you do this and you do this. Uh, so let's talk about your podcast. What, what inspired you to, to start the, your podcast and what's that about? Yeah, well, my Live Brave podcast is uh, not quite two years old. Um, and honestly, I, I actually, one of my failures, um, well, I don't know, if, I'm sure, was it a failure? It was a learning lesson. I launched, I launched um, my own, uh, let's call it an online TV channel about five years ago hmm. called Raw Courage TV. And you can still go to rawcourage.tv and, and find it with my advice segments and my interviews, pretty neat people. But I... It, I just weren't, wasn't able to make it commercially smart. I, put a, I spent a lot of money on it. Mm -hmm. um, I, didn't, I wasn't making money from it. And it just became commercially not viable. And at the same time, podcasts are starting to take off. Podcasts require so much less investment, frankly, of money than sitting down with two <laughs> cameras and my hair and makeup and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So I was like, Margie get over yourself and do a podcast. And, mm -hmm. um, and so I, so it was my, my live brave podcast is really insights from myself as well as a lot of interviews with really interesting people that I encounter in my travels, which um, I meet a lot of really interesting people, you know, Richard Branson and Marianne Williamson and Steve Forbes and, you know, all sorts of people from business and politics and spiritual, spiritual paths and what have you. And, and so, yeah, as I meet people, I'm like, hey, can I interview you for my podcast? So yeah. um, as well as sharing my own, my own experiences. And obviously, I have a whole series in there that's just on my new book. You've got this too. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So let's also then, before we go, talk about your, uh, your experience speaking at corporations. What, what initially made you want to start speaking and being a keynote speaker at different corporations? And how did your career evolve with that? Well, I actually never set out to do that, ever. Okay. Never, which is kind of funny because that's um, become a major thing that I do. I wanted to be a coach because I wanted to help people. And, and I'd had my own, I'd had, my, I'd had an eating disorder and I'd had, I have a brother who died. I have another brother who has paraplegia. You know, I had dealt with various challenges and, um, and, so I wanted to be a coach, but mm -hmm. then I realized once I had my website that just because you have a website doesn't mean you have a business. No one knew me. And it was like, oh, how do I get any coaching clients? Yeah. And, and I didn't have a network in America. I mean, I literally was new to a continent and um, zero, never got to college, never worked there. So I decided to go out and offer to speak at every little event, chapter meeting, association meeting, that existed in the Dallas Metro area. Um, and you know, it's like the new mums club and the business women's association and the, you know, the men's lions club or, you know, Probus or whatever, all these different, all these different groups, twins clubs and parent groups. And, um, and over the course of a couple of years, just, and they're always looking for a free, someone to speak for free at a local event. And I would give them a voucher. And if you, you want to do a coaching session with me, it was just my way of building a coaching business. Yeah. Um, and it was a lot of energy out, a lot of work out. My husband would stay home at night and put four kids down while I'd go out and give these talks for free. But over the space span of about 12, 18 months, nearly two years, some people would say, oh, would you come and talk at my company? You know, you were really good. Would you come in here, there and everywhere? And, and, it, and it ended up, someone said, oh, you know, how much do you charge? And I was like, oh my God, I can charge for this? <laughs> Like I didn't even know. I remember I sounded like Austin Powers. Um, how's yeah. two hundred dollars? And uh, they're like, "Oh yeah, that's great." I remember thinking, "I think maybe they thought that wasn't very much." <laughs> <laughs> I thought two hundred dollars sounded great. Yeah. Um, 
And, um, and then I obviously it was a whole learning curve, but now I do a lot of keynote speaking in the corporate realm and at conferences around, around the world, but a lot in the USA. And mm -hmm. of course that right now has come to a grinding halt, but um, I'm certainly looking forward to when we all do come together in groups again. And in the meantime, I'm, I'm doing them virtually. <laughs> Oh, great. With, so with your, with your speaking or even with the books, do you, do you do all of the, the planning and scheduling yourself or do you have an agent or a team of people that you work with who helps you on that side? Yeah, no, I absolutely have. I have, I have my own team um, who help with all of the back end and helping with the logistics and the bookings and the dealing with um, event planners, but I also do work with what's called speaker bureaus, which mm -hmm. I had never heard of when I started out. So I have speaker bureaus who will, I will, they, they will book me into an event through them. And so they also then handle some logistics and stuff too. But I absolutely have someone, I'm actually not particularly great with details. Admin is not my thing. So having someone else manage contracting and invoicing and mm -hmm. the logistics of who picks me up when, where, um, I'm, I'm happy to have people to manage that for me so I can add on where I add, where, focus on where I add the most value. Yeah, yeah, great. Um, so of the places you've spoken at, is there one that you would say has been the, the favorite so far? Ooh, well, I've had some pretty neat experiences, but in different places. But um, I got invited to Necker Island in the BVI with um, Richard Branson's Island, which um, with Richard Branson um, and a whole host of leaders and luminaries and amazing entrepreneurs. Um, so that was pretty neat. It wasn't a big group, but it was a pretty interesting experience. I also got to interview Richard Branson for um, for, for my for, for Forbes, and um, so that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, I've, I've spoken at some pretty big events in terms of, um, youth leadership events. So I did one in Singapore actually last year it was sponsored by, um, what's called the Asia foundation, but it was a part of an initiative that actually was to do with Obama had president Obama had, um, launched and this with the state department that was really about promoting, um, understanding and collaboration um, and relationships for young emerging leaders around the globe. And I was the keynote speaker opening that up. And, you know, that was a real honor because that's something that's very much aligned with my work. And, um, but, you know, I also spoke, I do, a, I really love emboldening women in, in the undeveloped world. And I did something in Kenya in a, in just in Nairobi a couple of years ago with a lot of women who come out of the, the slums there. Um, there's a slum called Kibera slum and, you know, it doesn't have any of the fanfare of a big rah-rah event at a massive big, ex, you know, conference centre, but very, very meaningful. So it depends on how you measure success, but some of the, some of the highlights haven't necessarily been the more glamorous ones. Yeah, yeah. So that's wonderful. So with everything that you have done and experienced so far, what would you say has been the best advice that you have ever received? Just, just forge your own path. You know, run your own best race. Do what it is. I, I think, um, and, be, and get advice, but apply it sparingly. Mm -hmm. I think when you're starting out, you're looking around at all of the people who are ahead of you, um, and going, oh, maybe I should be like them, and I should be like them, and um, and almost kind of imitating other people. Um, and I think just just doing, finding your own brand and your own expression, your unique expression. And you might kind of take bits and things you notice in others, but for me, just really trusting in my, my own path and not trying to be like somebody else, not trying to be, some people are very hardcore corporate leadership speakers and other people are, you know, very more new age spiritual or whatever. And, you know, I have deep spirituality through my, me and my work, but I'm, I'm, I'm just, just being, just trusting my own, what feels right for me, um, even if people struggle sometimes to put me in the label that they want to stick on you. Um, I think that's probably been the best advice I've had is just forge your own path and trust your own, trust your own instincts and intuition on things. Yeah, great. Well, Margie, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me. I really uh, appreciate it. If the listeners would like to see more of your work or buy your books, where is the best place they can go for those? Oh, well, thank you for asking. Um, obviously, all my books are available on Amazon and you've mm -hmm. got this is uh, there. Just type that in and Margie Worrell and it'll pop up. But um, my website is probably the best one-stop shop. If you go there, you'll have links to all my books, but also my podcast, 
um, information on my Live Brave Women's Weekends that, I, that I've been running around the world. Um, and yeah, I'd love to connect on social media wherever people hang out as well. It's always great to connect with people there too. Oh, well, wonderful. Well, I'll put the, make sure the links to all those are in the show notes so they can click right through. Sounds awesome. Great. Again, thank you so much, Margie. I really appreciate it. All right. My pleasure. Take care. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Advance Your Art Podcast. If you like this episode, please go into iTunes and give us a five-star rating. And while you're there, hit the subscribe button so that every single time I release a new episode, it will go directly to you without even thinking about it. If you're interested in hearing older episodes, please go to advanceyourart.com where you can find the catalog of everything I've done so far, as well as contact information and projects I'm working on. Thank you again and have a great day.